The Phoenix Suns are incredibly deep, and it isn't fair. Over his last four games, the three-time champion JaVale McGee is averaging 12 points, 8 rebounds, 1.2 blocks, and making 70% of his field goal attempts. Another signing from last summer in Landry Shamit has given the stacked ball club from the Valley yet another proficient three-point sniper, while the NBA's most elite two-way fourth option in Mikhail Bridges is shooting at least 50% from the field in his third consecutive season. So just how impactful is the pickup of JaVale McGee? And are the Suns the current favorites to get out of the West? Stick around to find out. Right quick, only 11.7% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes just a few seconds and it makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops, and I'll follow you back. Link is in the description for both those platforms. As we looked at in my Suns video this past Friday night, Devin Booker's underrated defense and patented bucket getting to go along with Chris Paul's consistently dominant facilitating are the driving factors behind the Suns currently being up three and a half games in the Western Conference. DeAndre Ayton's beastliness for opposing centers is also a main reason for that, but without the potent, mentally strong role players they possess, Phoenix wouldn't be tearing through the NBA to the extent in which they currently are. A few days ago, we went in depth on Bismack Biombo, who again went off last night, dropping 21 points, 13 rebounds, and two blocks against the Pacers. But today, we're going to lead off with another key center in the Suns' depth chart, the Shaq and a fool legend, JaVale McGee. He was inked to a one-year, $5 million contract with Phoenix last summer, with James Jones presuming that he'd increase their chances at winning an NBA title. While he was in a limited role, you can't forget JaVale did help the Warriors in 2017 and 2018, plus the Lakers in 2020, achieve the ultimate glory, earning himself three rings. The reigning West champions adding a proficient finisher offensively and a lengthy mobile paint protector on the other side has made Phoenix a much more physically imposing squad. Without JaVale in 2021, the Suns ranked 23rd in rebounding, whereas this campaign, the two-way big with a 7'6 wingspan, has helped elevate them into the number 6 ranked team in board getting. Last year, McGee was at the end of the bench with the Denver Nuggets, and he recently revealed that he was envisioning himself with the Suns, even as they were sweeping his team. The three-time champ said, if I was there, it would have been crazy. If I was there, I would be excelling right now. And a little over two months following Phoenix laying a beat down on JaVale's Nuggets in round two, his desire to be a part of the powerhouse Suns attack was obliged. But when the Suns ultimately lost in the 2021 finals to the Milwaukee Bucks in six, McGee couldn't help but think his presence would have made the difference. And there's validity to that sentiment, given Phoenix had little answer for Giannis Adetokounmpo inside, who won finals MVP, averaging 35.2 points on 61% shooting and 13.2 rebounds. DeAndre Ayton did take a step towards stardom, but the young five-man became limited with five fouls during Phoenix's losses in games three and six, forcing Frank Kaminsky to get a brunt of the minutes at center. The typical backup Suns five-man Dario Saric tore his ACL in game one, which sidelined him for the remainder of the finals as well as this season. The question remains, what would have occurred in that series against Milwaukee had the Suns signed McGee a year earlier? JaVale answered to that as fast as he gets up and down in transition, saying, people aren't shooting a high percentage at the rim when I'm in there. The fact that they got DA in foul trouble in the finals, there wouldn't have been a drop off with me coming in as a backup, end quote. And in 2021-22, proving that point to be right, the Suns have hardly seen much of a difference without Ayton when McGee checks in. Additionally, with DeAndre having missed 15 games, McGee's pickup is seeming like an even timelier and all-around better signing for Suns GM James Jones. To be fair, Chris Paul makes everyone around him look 10 times better with his crafty playmaking and top-notch leadership. Devin Booker and DeAndre Ayton have greatly contributed to the Suns' further improvement in 2022. As both are projected to be multi-year All-Stars, the Suns have both a collaborative and commanding coach in Monty Williams, and Phoenix retained plenty of role players from last season's finals team, including Jay Crowder, Mikhail Bridges, Cam Johnson, and Cameron Payne. Having said that, the Suns being a ridiculous 14-3 when Ayton sat out with various ailments has everything to do with the beastly presence of McGee. 
and good on the classy young and DeAndre for appreciating JaVale stepping in in his absence, saying, quote, he's the best backup I've ever had. JaVale does a great job with rolling. You see how he gets his points clearly. He runs the floor pretty well, and it's just, oh, boarding. I'm learning to keep crashing because he crashes the glass relentlessly. Sometimes I leak out just to get back on defense early, but he sometimes is trying to tell me to muck the game up with another board or another possession for us, end quote. And JaVale's contributions are showing up in the history book as he's averaged 10.1 points on 65.4% shooting along with 7.1 rebounds in 16 minutes off the pine. If McGee keeps up those numbers, he'll become the first player in NBA history to average at least 10 points and 7 rebounds while playing fewer than 16 minutes per game in a season. He is 0.2 minutes played overall ahead of achieving that record, but still above average outputs nonetheless. The current role JaVale's in is somewhat of the responsibility he was tasked with in Golden State and LA, but there are some distinctions. With the Warriors, McGee played scarcely, making appearances as both a starter and a reserve depending on matchups. For the Lakers, in the regular season, McGee started games more often, but come the postseason, he was out of the rotation, mostly due to the Lakers' depth at the center spot in 2019-20. With Phoenix, he may not start even without Ayton, but that's been a strategic choice from Coach Monty to keep the production they get from JaVale off the bench. Also, give credit to the quickness of Jalen Smith, who's currently the starter at the center spot. For JaVale, though, it's good to see the Suns showing this amount of investment in him as a reserve, both with his minutes and his role. McGee didn't experience anything close to this kind of stability in the rotation last season in Cleveland and Denver. Meanwhile, the former LA Clipper and Brooklyn Nets player in the deep range assassin Landry Shamit has the experience of hitting clutch shots in the playoffs. While he's only shooting 35% from three-point range on the year in 2021-22 through 40 games, while attempting four and a half triples on average per night, according to NBA.com's shooting dashboard, Landry's making a very solid 43.3% of his wide-open jumpers. Whether the five-year veteran's knocking it down or not, his volume and reliability when left wide open further increases the floor spacing for an already lethal unit that went to the finals without him in 2021. The lockdown, versatile 3 and D perimeter threat Mikael Bridges is 6'6 six six with a 7'1 wingspan and pristine instincts both defending on the ball and in the passing lanes. Mikhail's combination of long strides and reach give him the reputation for being one of the premier wing stoppers in the NBA today. He can guard positions 1 through 5 with the ability to lock down shot creators as tall as Kevin Durant and as small as Fred Van Vliet. Mikhail's currently second directly behind Golden State's Andrew Wiggins in defensive rating among small forwards. Bridges is 15th among all players in total deflections, number 19 in total steals, and it's that hustle which has led him to shut down the likes of Stephen Curry. Offensively, Mikhail's efficiency is demonstrated by the fact that he ranks number six just ahead of Jimmy Butler in true shooting percentage among small forwards. You can always count on him to hit big shots, and he's an exceptional cutter as well. He's one of the best at doing that in the entire league. The man finishes at an extremely high rate inside, making 80.6% of his shots inside of three feet. What everyone forgets about Bridges, given his defense and athleticism, is that he's also a very effective deep range shooter, currently making 38% of his shots from three point land. But at the center spot specifically, whether it's been Jalen Smith, Bismack Biombo, or JaVale McGee, in your opinion, who's been the most shocking Phoenix Suns five man? Best answer in the comments section gets next video shout out. Top five commenters with the most shout outs by March 21st receive NBA merchandise of their choosing this spring. So leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Devin Sedotal. Pause to read Devin's great take as well as the honorable mentions. This was D Flow. I hope you have a great one and I'll see you next video.